Welcome to another video on the Mega MTR105 rotating machine tester. Uh, in this video I'm just going to go through the actual instrument itself and a little bit of a comparison to the 1461A and the MetraHit coil. So this is the MTR105 that you see before you. You can see the unit itself is actually a completely moulded unit. The rubberized cover is quite thin but it's moulded onto the plastic so that gives you one complete instrument as opposed to these other two that have a rubberized boot covered over them. For this actual MTR105 you can see I have immediate access to both the fuse compartment there you have a fuse here for live terminal and another fuse for the guard terminal. Um, these are captivated screws and the, this section of the lip is actually rubberized so you've got a seal there for any moisture, uh, dirt ingress. And then battery compartments again, single access screw. It says. And there's the six batteries. Um, this isn't the batteries that arrived with it. The batteries that arrived with it are in actual fact energizer ones but I've burnt through those doing all the tests on it. So I've actually replaced these as second-hand batteries at the moment, actually. Um, but they're not the original ones that arrived before somebody jumps up and says, that's a really bad battery make. So I tend to like that style of instrument as opposed to these two. I can't actually get to either of the battery or fuse compartments in this without taking the cover off. And it's quite a wrestle to, to get the cover off of this one. This one is much easier to take out of its cover, you can see it comes straight out and then in actual fact even with it inside I can still actually gain access to the fuse compartment but I can't gain access to the battery compartment which for me I prefer it to be the other way around I think you'd want to get to the batteries more than you would the fuse. Now I'll put a slide up of the dimensions and weights of these units. That's quite interesting to me because if you average out the weight of these two units and compare it to this, this is almost 45% heavier than the average of these two. I must say, having used it and carried it around, it actually quite surprised me when I, I did the math on that. Um, I wouldn't have said that this was that much heavier than either of these two units. Um, obviously that's down to individuals um, and what you do tend to notice with the weight of this it appears to be more in the top of the unit so when you're hitting the buttons it's not too bad on this one if you hit these top ones you can see sometimes I lock it up a little bit whereas um, the key sight in actual fact what actually happens with this one is it starts to inch its way up if you can see that and eventually it will fall over or take a jump back as the way it did this is actually the more stable of the two you can it does wobble a bit but it doesn't move anywhere so uh, this is uh, a little bit better stand on this than the other two units and there's no problems with the rotary switch either in terms of putting them in their cases this unit then turns out to be the lightest and the smallest that's given really that it goes into a soft case whereas these other two units start to become much heavier I will put a picture up of what I've done for this unit because it just came in a cardboard box I've got my own case for it and sponge and I have also built up another coil adapter for this unit so that all adds to the weight but since that's how I carry the unit around that's how I kind of judged these three instruments with regards to the, the weight in the packaging. Visually as you look at them the other main difference between this and these are the two units is the fact that the connections on this are at the top here and you have a little slide cover to get to the USB here and obviously a lot more connections due to the functionality of this instrument that you can see on these other two. This does have the facility for a remote probe but the remote probe doesn't actually come with the unit however you can actually see here that this is the standard remote probe from the MIT range and you can see it fits in and will operate the instrument so if you wanted to use one with that that would be the unit to go for personally for me I wouldn't use it especially as this is 
aimed at motor testing, I wouldn't find a remote probe actually that useful. And as we get into the testing of the unit, uh, for me personally, there's a better option than having using up space for a remote probe. Um, the only thing I will say with having the connections up here at the top, because they're not immediately visible to you, you find yourself having to pick the instrument up to swap the leads over onto the connections as you change the different tests. And with the amount of tests that this does, you will find yourself swapping the leads around a little bit. Whereas when you look at these two units with the connections at the front here, they're obviously easy and straightforward to get the jacks in and out of. So we'll do some boot up times on these. I'll switch them all to insulation voltage, which for these is a rotary switch. We'll let that one fire up and you'll see it takes a little bit longer for this to fire up. We'll go to 50 volts on this one. And for this one, it's actually a soft start on this as opposed to the rotary switch. The rotary switch just does the functions. So you can see this is probably the fastest switch on time, followed by this one, and then this one is the slowest. Now there is an awful lot of functionality across all of these instruments. As an aid to looking at that, what I've done is created this set of charts for the functions. One set is the main function, which covers really the insulation testing and a summary of it, which is the, the bit I'm interested in more than anything else. And then I've got a second part underneath for the auxiliary functions. Over on the right hand side, the column that I've titled in red of functionality. This is the overall score of the number of functions um, which is missing and which is installed on the instrument. So overall, you can see at 75%, the U1461A has the most functionality. Uh, that is actually followed by the MTR105 and then the MetroHit coil. And the other thing to note is right at the last two columns on this top table here, these are the unique functions that I've picked out on the instrument. So in comparison to the top three, which is the end column, you can see the MEG has six unique functions. The Keysight has four, MetroHit only has three. If I compare it across the whole group of instruments that I've looked at, you can see that none of the other instruments have any functionality that isn't included in either of these three other instruments. And you can work your way through this table and you can see where the various functions are included in an instrument and uh, are missing a, a cross, obviously showing it's missing, a tick showing it's installed. So that's one aspect that will go into the scoring of these instruments. So on top of that, I also have a technical comparison table. Uh, this shows the main functions and the range over those instruments. And you can see here immediately, both the Mega and the Keysight have a much further extended range with regard to insulation test. Um, the only, there are a couple of instruments down in the other ones, showing our new units and the Sonal unit and obviously the other mega unit, they give it extended ranges as well. But you can see the various ranges for each of the function. The final table I've got is an accuracy. This is the basic accuracy that I've got for each of the main functions. And obviously it will come into play a little bit and the overall scoring but to be honest they're relatively close across one another you know five percent for the metro hit coil for an insulation test is perfectly adequate accuracy uh, i know the other two units do have better accuracy stated but the five percent it is fine really um, so again you can uh, pursue that table to your heart's content so no doubt we have all spotted another major difference between all these three units in terms of the display, which is color for the MTR105. And this is the OLED display on the key site and a standard LCD on the MetroHit coil. The color didn't really appeal to me. I found it a bit gimmicky to start off with really. It still doesn't do an awful lot for me, but I've kind of got used to it now. Um, if as I look at stuff from the, the side, it's hard to do this on the camera. Um, I'll try as best I can to bring them in close. So you can see from the side, yeah, you can still see fairly good. You're around about 45 degrees to the camera there. So it's not too bad to view an angle on it. The view and angle does, does suffer when you lay the unit flat. This does have a backlight as well. Um, uh, one, two, four stages. So I'm not sure if uh, 
as you lay it down then, so on maximum backlight and laid down, you can actually see and read that probably. So, uh, not too bad. I don't know what that does to battery life though. There. Now, with regard to displaying the information, I actually found this Mega very nice for that. You can see here as you go through the various functions that are here, the display will actually change colour to match the colour on the dial here and here. So there's my resistance. Actually, sure I've got the, uh, the orange screen. I go to yellow for the four wire uh, inductance. That's actually uh, onto the green there. So that is one of the elements that I found a little bit gimmicky. I guess it's quite a nice touch, but I don't really find it gives an awful lot of value to the instrument itself. Um, in terms of the actual data that's displayed, I actually like the simplicity of both this unit and the metro hit. Um, I've always found the key site to be quite a busy display, uh, especially when you start to turn other functions on on there. You, you take up another little window which, and there's various different sized texts on there and you don't really have a proper bar graph that you have on both of these instruments. So this instrument does have a little bar graph on there but um, some very very small text which can be easy to miss as you change through various functions on this. What they've done with this Mega is uh, put it into the display a little bit better. As you can see here you're on insulation testing so we're on uh, a red screen to match the red dial and the functionality is on these control buttons here so I can move through the different tests and it will tell me which one it is and this, although you've got two buttons this is completely rotary and what you will also notice is when you press the test button the control side of the screen drops down and you're left with a little bit bigger screen for the actual test and obviously you see here the little bar graph across the top and quite clearly the digits uh, fill in the rest of the screen at the majority of the screen and down at the bottom here you have the voltage and the current for an insulation test if you move to a DAR test and press that it locks on and now you've got the same display you've just got a little timer down in the bottom there bottom left corner to help you along with the test kill him what you do actually have on this insulation tester as well um, for all the functions that you see because you have quite a few connection points on the instrument if you hit the information button which is a yellow one here for whatever test you're on it will display the actual test connections that you need for the function that you are on uh, so we're on insulation test there if i go around to voltage press the information again it's just those two over there if i spin around to the four wire and it shows you the test points there so although the actual test jacks are quite obvious really if there is any doubt in your mind you can very quickly find it on the instrument so that's quite a nice touch there and you just press the button again to get rid of it so points time again for the basic instrument and their functionality for me personally i'm going to give five points to the Mega. That's primarily based upon the number of unique functions that it's got and that it's built around that insulation testing capability. It's actually then quite a close call between the key site and the metric. If you're looking at this from the perspective of testing motors, this is probably geared up a little bit more towards that. And although this does have a lot more functionality to it and it does have better accuracy, the multimeter aspect of this instrument is aimed more towards the, the slightly electronic side in that respect uh, with the logging facilities that you can have with it. So in actual fact, I think this time around, I'm going to give second place to the Metrohit coil and I'm going to put him in last place. Now obviously that's my perspective, it's based predominantly on testing motors and the different aspects of each of these instruments. So yeah, I think that's what I will call it as first, second, third, five, three, and one points. Uh, and I'll add that to my overall score. Thanks for watching this video. I uh, hope you found it interesting. I hope you got some information out of it on the actual instruments. 
and I will see you again in the next video on the MTR105 where I will go through insulation accuracy tests, predominantly on the Mega, but I've already done the values on these as well, so I'll have them to compare.